So in him we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Woo oh my God. It, it's one thing to praise God and give him glory. It's a whole nother thing to be to the praise of his glory. Woo, stay with me, church. Oh, my God. In whom also have be, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee? Of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. And then when you skip down to chapter number two, verse number five says, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> he came to show them that when he came out the grave that he would produce a duplication of him. And Satan says, if we couldn't handle one of him, you did hear what I said. If they couldn't do nothing with one of him, uh, what they gonna do with all of us uh, when we really shift into our identity? What they gonna do when we really realize who we are and what we work in? And so Satan says, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? I've given him the ability to duplicate himself. And Jesus says, and that ain't all. He says, that's just the image part. That's just the likeness part. And then the Bible says, and Jesus when he was consummated with his salvation, went into the heavens and sat down at the right hand of the Father. This is a position. I believe he crossed his legs. You know Jesus cool. He got a little. No. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. This is why I call this the ascension dimension. Because it didn't just end with you getting born again and now that you're duplicated, now that you're in his image and after his likeness, now you have become an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Which means Jesus did just die to save you from your sins. He also died so that he could give you everything he received through the resurrection. In other words, he said to me like this. He says, Isaac, tell my church the next dimension for them is not them just living for me, but them living with me. Everybody say, I wasn't born again just to live for him. I said, just to live for him. 
You know you got to live for him, but that's not the only thing. He doesn't just want you around here following rules and laws and rituals and all that. He says, no, no, I got you for a higher calling. I'm going to make you sit right here until my enemies be made my foot. I brought you in here so you can learn how to rule with me and reign with me and sit with me and speak with me. Somebody shout, I'm seated with him. Yes, he says, I brought you in here so that now you can share with me my authority, my majesty, my dominion, my wisdom. In other words, Jesus said, I got all of that so I can hand it to you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, would you please sit down? And it is this ascension dimension that a lot of the church is missing. There are some of you in this room, you are saved, you are sanctified, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you love God, you serve God. I mean, you honor him, you don't smoke, don't chew, don't hang with those that do. I'm glad you're saved and on your way to heaven, but I got one more role for you. Your job ain't finished just on your way to heaven. Your job is finished when you sit in heavenly places. Watch this over all principality. Which means a Satan is not your equal. He is not your issue. He is not your problem. Oh, let me say it to you. There is nowhere after the resurrection that Jesus tells you or Paul tells you to pray about what the enemy is doing in your life. Satan is not to be prayed about. That was before you sat down. Now that you sat down, you don't pray about devils. You cast 